With the arrival of Zack Snyder's Justice League, John Jones has finally made his fully-fledged big-screen debut. But just who is this iconic DC superhero, and why are fans so excited to see him in all his alien glory? This is the history of the Martian Manhunter. It all started back in November 1955, in the pages of Detective Comics issue 225. The main story in this issue follows Jim Gordon, as he wins a contest to be Batman for a day. But that's not really important here. In the back half of the issue, among the Z-list heroes and hair gel commercials, there's a story entitled The Strange Experiment of Dr. Erdell. This tale introduces Professor Mark Erdell, world-famous scientist, and his remarkable new invention, the robot brain of the century. Hoping to use it to probe the cosmos, whatever that means, Erdell turns on his machine, and John Jones suddenly appears. It's revealed that Jones is an alien scientist from Mars transported to Earth through the power of Erdell's invention. Erdell explains the circumstances of Jones's teleportation, and states that it may take years to recalibrate the robot brain to send the visitor home. Thankfully, Jones takes the news like a champ, and uses his shape-shifting abilities to transform into a human man. The shock of witnessing this incredible feat proves to be the last straw for Erdell, however, who promptly dies. Now trapped on an unfamiliar world, the alien takes in his surroundings and realizes that Earth is a primitive place compared to Mars, and is desperately in need of a lawman. Adopting the slightly more low-key moniker of John Jones, he sets off on an expository mission, hoping to show Earth's citizens what he's made of. Jones subsequently walks into the Middleton Police Precinct and immediately lands a job, despite straight up freaking out whenever people light cigarettes in front of him. This is because, in his alien form, his one weakness is fire. Which only sounds dumb if you put aside the fact that Batman's weaknesses are everything, including fire, and that the Green Lantern Yarling Gur was at separate times vulnerable to wood and the color yellow. It's the superhero thing. Over the next few years, the Manhunter from Mars continues to work for the Middleton Constabulary in the guise of John Jones, ace detective. And as tended to happen in those days, his list of abilities got longer seemingly with every issue. In his second appearance, he exhibits telekinesis, or Martian mind over matter as he calls it. X-ray vision was then added to the roster, as was the power to scare sharks away by turning green. All the while, Jones waits for Martian technology to reach the point where it can finally bring him home. In 1959, during the earlier years of the Silver Age of comics, the Martian Manhunter made the leap from secret detective to full-blown superhero. The following year, he became a founding member of the original Justice League of America in the pages of The Brave and the Bold, issue 28. In this groundbreaking issue, DC Comics united the members of the Justice League — Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, and Aquaman, as well as the Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, and an honorary member named Snapper Carr, who's uh, pretty good at snapping. When Martian Manhunter does battle against the Martian artifact known as the Idol Head of Diabolu, everything gets turned on its head. Realizing that he can't continue masquerading part-time as a human detective if he is to crush this enemy for good, Jones does away with his John Jones alias. Soon after, he adopts the name Marco Xavier in order to infiltrate the crime cartel called Vulture, before disbanding it in April 1968's House of Mystery, issue 173. Things remain relatively tame for the Martian Manhunter after that, with maybe the most remarkable thing that happens being his adoption of a goofy pet sidekick named Zook. Sadly, he also began appearing in the comics less and less, after Superman was given a promotion to active, full-time JLA member. The Martian Manhunter takes part in one last Justice League mission in a March 1968 comic, and then, ten issues later, leaves Earth to lead New Mars. Martian Manhunter isn't seen very much after he goes to New Mars in the early 1970s, bouncing between that planet and Earth on only a few occasions. At one point, his fellow JLAers, Superman and Batman, lend a hand in a fight on New Mars, proving the bond between Justice League members knows no interplanetary bounds. Then, in 1984, the Martian Manhunter rejoined the Justice League of America, coming back to Earth on a permanent basis and self-stylizing as John Jones once more. The late 1980s saw DC scrubbing up its comics in hopes of achieving greater mainstream success. As part of this effort, the Justice League of America was given a sleeker and more recognizable name in 1987. This new run highlighted the Martian Manhunter's inherent comedic presence amongst the other members of the Justice League, and padded out his backstory a little too. A year later, the character got his own comic miniseries, simply titled 
Martian Manhunter, and that one really had some fun with the character's past. Several big reveals come into play during this run. For one, it turns out that Dr. Erdell didn't actually die when John Jones shapeshifted, and that the character's alien look is a fabrication, a blend of what Martians really look like and what humans look like. In reality, the Martian Manhunter more closely resembles a gangly dinosaur. Additionally, it's revealed that Martian Manhunter had been transported to Earth not just through space travel, but also through time travel. It turns out that his people had actually died off thousands of years prior to that first Detective comic story, giving him the chance to play with that classic, last of my kind sci-fi trope. The Martian Manhunter stories became pretty tough to follow in the 90s, with each story purging retcon being swiftly followed by a litany of narrative cheat days. Generally, Jones still fights a good fight alongside his Justice League fellows, both as himself and through means of outside intimidation, as the necromancer Bloodwind, with whom he was accidentally merged. After that, Doomsday knocks him around a bit, Blue Beetle finds out the truth of the situation, and then the merged characters both get successfully separated. Later, the Martian Manhunter becomes wrapped up in the murder mystery investigation at the heart of 1992's American Secrets miniseries. Five years later, he helps found a new Justice League and fights off invasions of white Martians, the malevolent cohabitants of his home planet. He even becomes trapped for a time in the Phantom Zone, is framed by his meddling brother Mala Furark, and uses his severed hand to regenerate his whole body after it's blown apart in an explosion. Perhaps most surprisingly, however, the comics also revealed that John Jones, the Martian Manhunter's first assumed identity, was a real man who was tragically murdered. So yeah, things got pretty weird. But none of it could prepare fans for the character's live-action debut. 1997 saw the premiere of Justice League of America, a bizarre pop culture experiment seemingly drawn from a dozen different time periods. Its characters came from classic DC comics, its mockumentary film style was a decade ahead of its time, and its so-called jokes seemed like they were pulled from a futuristic post-apocalyptic wasteland where laughter died a long, long time ago. Here, fans got their first live-action taste of Martian Manhunter, played by MASH's own David Ogden Styers. He's portrayed as the leader of the Justice League, and is seen exhibiting powers ranging from shape-shifting to… well, that's it. It wasn't a great movie. And haven't you felt like you appreciate more of the things that we have for us here in, this, in our world? And you know, he's more green! From there, though, the Martian Manhunter train started to build up steam. The character debuted in Smallville during the show's sixth season, albeit in human form thanks to the limitations of TV special effects at the time. David Harewood would take up the baton in the Arrowverse, playing Jones in Supergirl, The Flash, and The Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. Meanwhile, in the world of animation, The Martian Manhunter has made more appearances than you can count, with over a dozen actors lending their voices to the role over the last few decades. It should be clear by now that Jones is a much-adored and vital part of the DC Universe, both as a fascinating solo character and as a founding member of one of the world's best-known superhero teams. So why did it take so long to get a big-screen version of Martian Manhunter? Well, he did once come close to getting a silver-screen debut. Back in 2007, Mad Max and Happy Feet director George Miller was all set to bring his vision of the Justice League to theaters. The story of what really happened to Justice League Mortal is an absolute roller coaster, filled with studio intrigue, failed dreams, and Hollywood politics. And among it all, Miller had tagged his frequent collaborator Hugh Keyes Byrne to play the world's first major motion picture version of Martian Manhunter. Then, in 2013, Zack Snyder's Man of Steel introduced audiences to a military officer by the name of General Calvin Swanwick, played by Harry Lennox. General Swanwick, sir. I'm on with the control tower. Colonel Hardy's on his way in and he's got Superman in tow. Superman? The alien, sir. That, that's what they're calling him, Superman. Fan theories quickly circulated that Lennox was secretly Martian Manhunter in disguise, and Snyder took a shine to the idea, planning a big reveal during the events of his Justice League movie. While the theatrical cut of the film wound up Manhunter free, however, the character finally made his first bona fide Hollywood debut in the recut movie's closing scenes. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.